Welcome everybody to the screencast. As we're about to launch OpenSUSE Leap 15.2 shortly, it's about time to demonstrate you how easy it is to install and set up OpenSUSE on your computer. Let's start at the very beginning. First of all, we need some installation media. To get this installation media, we can go to OpenSUSE.org and on this website we have various options uh, what we can download. For example, we can download uh, the Tumbleweed, the rolling release or Leap, the stable release. Uh, as said, 15.2 uh, is not yet released, so we will not find this in the standard download section. So to, to get the new version, I go to the download server directly and uh, select the ISO image from there. It's under download.openzuse.org. You don't have to note this pass. I will put it down into the um, description of this video. So I just take uh, the latest ISO image with the net installer. That means the net installer just has a very small system um, and it downloads most of the packages during runtime from the internet. After the download is completed we can start the installation. I will do the installation in a virtual box. OpenSUSE comes with VirtualBox pre-installed. What we do now is we create a new VirtualBox, a new virtual machine. We call it OpenSUSE Leap 15.2. That's already recognized as OpenSUSE system with 64-bit. So in the next step, we need to add some RAM to this machine. Um, default is one gigabyte. We increase it slightly to two gigabytes. Afterwards, we need to create a hard disk for this, and it's a dynamically hard disk. That means the size will increase as we need it. We increase the size to around 40 gigabyte. That should be sufficient. Before we start up the virtual machine, we need to change the settings slightly. because we need to add a mass storage and we will add the ISO image here that we've just downloaded. So we go to the selection dialog, add an image, go to the download location and add the ISO image that we've just downloaded. Once we're done this, we are complete and can start the virtual machine. We start the virtual machine and immediately the boot logo comes up and we're in the boot menu. We choose installation and keep the language on English and hit enter and the machine starts up. So it loads now a minimum data set from the image that we've just downloaded. And in a later step, we'll set up the repositories to install all the files that we need for the installation. I have now skipped most of the boot process. It shows up some additional information messages and then the graphical installer comes up. First, it configures the network. In this case, it's quite easy because it's using an Ethernet connection. And then it's downloading or setting up the repositories. I skipped most of the download again. And now the license information is displayed. We can choose the language and the keyboard. Um, I will change the German keyboard course this is more convenient for me and we confirm this step 
the installer check if a network connection is available and gives us the option to add repositories. We can skip this here. So now the basic steps are done and we can come to the meat of the installation and choose our system role. We have various pre-configured options here. First of all, a desktop with a KDE, a desktop with GNOME, a generic desktop that allows us to choose the desktop environment like LXQT or Xface at a later stage. A server setup without graphical interface and finally the transactional server which runs from a read-only file system and is the basis for micro os for example for this installation we choose the kde's desktop and as next step we get a partitioning proposal let's take the default proposal and go to the next step so now the system synchronizes uh, the time and we can choose the time zone. As I'm in Europe, I select Europe and as country, lovely Germany. Now I can create a user for the system later on as we have a test installation here. We can just call him test and use the password test, which is of course too short, but nevertheless, for our demonstration purposes, it should be sufficient, but don't do this in production. So we're getting the summary of the installation with the software that we want to install, with the settings, with uh, ports and services and so on. And if we continue here, we got another pop-up that says, do you really want to install? If we say yes, then the installation process starts and it immediately starts downloading the packages from the OpenSUSE servers. We let the installer work for himself and come back once the installation is done. The installer is now writing the system settings and will prepare for the first boot of the system. So now the pop-up comes up and says now we are ready for the first boot. We confirm this and the system will reboot. But what I will do now, I will interrupt this process and switch off the virtual machine because I want to take out the ISO image from the interface so otherwise it will every time when it starts up try to boot the installation CD first which we really don't need. We start now our virtual machine. The boot screen comes up immediately and we let the machine boot OpenSUSE Leap 15.2 it uh, takes a little moment and then the desktop comes up and we are done. So the newly installed system has booted for the first time. We can resize the window according to our needs and we are now ready to install additional software. That was the installation of OpenSUSE Leap 15.2 on a new computer. Completely menu-driven, it gives you an easy entry into the world of free and open source software. In the next video, you'll learn how to install additional software on this newly set up system.